All right, well, this is the the first session of chapter three of the the campaign. Does that mean we level up? No, no, it does not. Uh, right, so I want to be level eighty by now. Fuck this. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with a little bit as I like as I try to do each start a new chapter. I'm gonna start off with a bit of a plot cinematic intro to set the scene slash stakes of the current point in this campaign and it's gonna make no sense because nobody knows what the fuck is going on because nobody takes notes but it's fine we're gonna have fun regardless and we're gonna I take notes sometimes I, I literally have my notes just delete pulled them. up right now <laughs> All right, as we begin today, we fade in on a small hillside somewhere in the galaxy. The title card reads Megru 3, two weeks prior. Megru 3, often referred to as the storm rock of the Megru moons, three skies are constantly filled with dark and damp clouds. The planet's surface matches this persona with mud and puddles as far as the eye can see. If you had to pick one of the Megrus to live on for the rest of your days, number three would not be your first choice. Perched upon a large hill of soggy ground is a black chrome vessel. Its polished form shows off no glimmer or gleam, considering the lack of sunlight and the clear lack of cleaning over the years. However, the shaded dark exterior and piles of mud provide a certain level of cover in the cloud shadows. The ship is completely silent. Someone would have thought it to be abandoned upon first sight, yet inside there is a host. Moving quickly from one side of the craft to the other, a green cloaked figure with a short frame is sprinting. This tracker, maybe, moves in a precise manner, back and forth, back and forth, one side of the ship to the other. A good seven laps take place before the creature stops, huffing out a sigh, and then they begin stomping. It starts out as just a stomp of frustration, and then turns into a full-on jump stomp. Smashing their metal boots into the grated floor, the ship begins to stir a bit. Sounds of machinery creaking down below can be heard, and the lights on board flash on and off. Stentel, Yafre, the hooded figure, whimperly croaks. It had been days since they last heard their own voice. Almost immediately after these words were spoken, the ship whirs to life. A rush of power surges through the entire vessel. Lines of LED screens light up, and calming sounds of the ship's engine leer in the background as the small figure sits down in the pilot's seat at the front of the craft. Stentel. Tok. Kraim. The hooded one bellows. Suddenly, a holographic map appears about a foot from the hidden face. Kios. They scroll through the planetary system like it was nothing. Worlds. Star systems. The entire galaxy flashes into view and then is gone again like a page being turned in a book. Tychos. Teia. Bokia. Imon Tychos. A red X appears on the map over the glowing depiction of a reddish-yellow planet. The map then disappears in a moment and the engines are fired up twofold. Actually, the entire ship corrects its course in an instant, aiming itself towards the stars. Stentel, Tokia, Shime Ek, Leom, was the last thing said before the black rocket shot into the atmosphere, leaving Megru 3 in silence once more. Or so the tracker thought. On a large incline of rocks about nine meters away from the ship's previous spot, the Phantom laid watching. The whole time the small figure had been on this wretched planet, it had been witnessed by this mysterious shadow. They were wearing tight black full-body armor, yet hidden completely by a specifically designed cloaking technology. Now revealed, across one arm, we can all see the dark gray text reading, The Network. A small, metallic orb comes floating back over the rocks. Once in place, about two feet from the phantom's ear, the orb begins playing a sound. The moment the machine began spying on the black ship, it was attempting to translate the language it heard. Its programming wasn't perfect, and the language was something thought to be long dead, but the phantom was getting more than enough information to do their job. 
The figure just sat crouched in the space between two rocks and continued to listen. From the tiny metal ball played more words. The phantom quickly pressed a button on the floating sphere and began trekking back down the rocks with a quick pace. The signal they just sent was a five-digit code followed by a rough translation. It was now headed directly back to Network HQ via a secured line. It was a code so rare, the people of the Omega Astra would probably need to spend weeks searching through old databases to crack it. The code went like this. 58029 Sepris Tychos, Stentel, Tokia, Shime, Ekleum. Once adapted to common, most would still not exactly know what the message meant for the galaxy. Even still, it read as follows. Plot a course for Vegarok. It's time, Sentinel. We're finally going home. And now, I will... <laughs> give a bit of a recap of what happened last episode last time on tales of the omega astria the crew of the bronze phoenix wanted to celebrate the revival of their crewmate devon and do some catching up so they headed straight to a spaceship themed pub inside of adon keep run by a triton named zarek as the afternoon went on a few party members i.e devon brack got too drunk to attend the official mission briefing hosted by Iva they had a few hours later. What? But the rest of the crew uh, listened carefully as she explained the current state of the galaxy's newest war. Their mission, if they chose to accept it, head to Vegarok, deal with the unrest, and defeat one of Traitus's agents, a minotaur named Thraxagidon. Erebus had already had a personal interest in the bull creature and its infamous maze lair, and the rest of the crew were eager to put a stop to Traitus' schemes once and for all, and this would be a huge step in doing so, so they agreed. The next day, the crew headed back to the Azure Sanctuary to complete their quest of bringing back their other dead friend, Maddie Winters. The ritual was successful, but as it concluded, their ally, Chero, suddenly disappeared in a flash of arcane power. The crew was left in shock, not sure what to make of the Dragonborn's disappearance. And just when they thought things couldn't get any worse, Cox saw a real-time vision of Cheros being discovered by the pirate lord himself, Traitus. And what does the crew do now? This, this crew of the Bronze Phoenix. They could try to drop everything and save Cheros if they knew where exactly he was, but uh, seems like first they have a date with fate on Vegarok. All tasks have seemed daunting in recent weeks, but the crew of the Bronze Phoenix has also seemed very determined to, at very least, make it to the next day. So, the four, or I sh the five of you, um, Erebus, Cock, Devon, Brock, and Reinhardt, emerge from the Azure Sanctuary's portal into the main vault of Aiden Keep. Your faces all grim, your steps heavy. The ritual to revive <laughs> your fallen comrade came with a great cost. And you all feel a certain level of mental strain from this sort of balance that you've gone in between the past two days with life and death. And, you know, making the choice to bring back people who had died. But as you step back into the vault, Cock, I assume, I think last time, it was a week ago, so you can change your mind if you want. But last time you said you wanted to go searching for your pet tortoise. Is that still your plan yes all right so you sort of rush past the rest of the party in a blur calling out for the wardus um and you disappear down the corridor leaving the rest of the crew just to process this this feeling the other four stand around sort of heads held low and then reinhardt breaks the silence well uh, that didn't go as planned. I know none of us expected to be losing a crewmate upon returning another, but look, Maddie is back. She's alive. That is a win for the crew of the Bronze Phoenix, whether she chooses to rejoin us or not. We have to focus on the positives, focus on what we have here and now. Yeah. Uh, I just worry at what cost to Maddie. It's Seeing the grief that was over her, um, and 
her blaming herself when she had no control over being brought back and that seemingly leading to Cheros leaving our side is I worry about her future condition is it's important to be alive but you you have to live a fulfilling life at the same time this is true but she may be wary she may be drained but I know from the time I've spent with you know the Vindicta and now the Bronze Phoenix that she can take this she can grow from this and ultimately she can help us we I don't know if she's gonna join us but we have to start with the the Minotaur we have to save mm. Elphir gain allies where we can and then he sort of like leans back and he, as he's talking Reinhardt like begins ghost lighting his e-cigarette before realizing he doesn't have it anymore and stops himself as he like leans up against the wall. We're gonna go knocking down that son of bitch's door. If that's the last thing we do, we. I just want to get it over with. You know, I don't know if I can handle any more surprises. Traitus has to be stopped. Yes, I. I think there has to be some reservations, however, on our capacities to deal with. Traitus and his goons at this current moment, like you alluded to. Um, perhaps if we handle the Minotaur and the other obstacles that face us, we will make more valuable allies along the way, grow stronger, and prepare ourselves as, po as best we can to face our main adversary. But I fear if we throw ourselves headfirst into the fire, uh, you know, minimum we're going to get burnt maximum all of our faces are going to get melted off <laughs> yeah we have to be smart about whatever we do um sorry if i don't have all the words uh leon adrian was so much better at this whole commander thing than i am i'm s i guess you could say i'm still learning it's better he abandoned us in a science facility you would never yeah, that dude was an asshole. Asshole. we don't know what happened we do know he left without us we don't know that Maybe he died trying to protect us. We've... I don't know. I'd like to believe that that's the man he was, considering the the legend of his hero. You know? Reinhardt, you see the good in everyone, and that is both a blessing and a curse. But when the chips were down, that dude was kind of a bitch, TBH. <laughs> Let us not divide ourselves now and focus yes. on the past crew we should focus on the future and making sure we have a gunner for our guns and a cook before we leave and go to Vegnarok. yes very good point Osiris is being as prepared as we possibly can for what we are about to face um, and I for one think uh, that chef should be our top priority as uh, there's no better way to keep morale high than with a good meal uh, Getting a gunner is also a pretty high priority because we need to make sure we hit people in combat. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Um, Ada said she would help with that. So should we go find Ada, or have they already sort of like picked people out for us? I suppose there's only one way to go find out. Maybe if they haven't picked anyone out, then we'll have maybe some options to choose from, which would be nice. Indeed. Um, as you guys finish saying that, you can see a figure approaching into the vault. It's a basic human female with, like, leather armor. She walks down into the vault. Ah, Rani said you'd be here. Granny? Rani, uh, head Granny. communications officer. Gotcha. I have, a uh, a message for you. Okay. It's I don't know. Shoot. Well, there's two actually. The the first is well, it's decrypted, so I suppose you don't want me to open it and tell you. You can just open it yourself. She hands oh, it out you. towards the tabaxi, and the other is for it's a message for the anomaly worshipper among you. I... He went to go find his war turtle. Ah, uh, 
words that I uh, don't understand, but uh, if you wouldn't so mind. Turtle, and he has a bigger turtle that he rides into battle. She hands that out to you as well, if you see him. Make sure I always have my eyes closed. <laughs> Alright, so you take both messages. Yep. Alright, so the the one for you is a encrypted message from Zalix, Zal- Zalix the Tabaxi contact on Begarok. And it's it's a very vague message, but the main thing that you get is she'll be waiting for you guys at the uh, Elysium Enclave in the Sky City of Gull. And she mentions noticing a lot of strange activity in the lowlands, particularly with with a couple new trade routes. But she'll tell you more when you're when she sees you in person. Ah, oh, Elysium. Is that the? That is the. I have these notes in my. <laughs> On my phone, because Dylan sent them to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't make sense if I didn't have information about my home planet. <laughs> uh, you said Gull, right? Yeah. Okay. Gull. Gull, which is basically the... Of the main sky cities, it's like the poorest one. Gotcha. So we might have to make a side stop in Olympia. Washington. <laughs> No, no, no. And then my other question would be, do you listen to the message for Cock, or do you wait to give it to him? Um, I am a spy, and I'm sure Cock would completely understand when I both listen to it and give it to him. <laughs> nah, I'll just give it to him. Okay. After creating a copy of it on my uh, Thieves Code. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> um, actually, give me a, um... Give me an investigation roll. Not sleight of hand? No. You're not letting me use my busted sleight of hand? Doesn't make sense for the situation. Um, well, I believe my investigation modifier is zero, but just let me double check. Sorry, with me trying to use my phone for this, everything is not as readily accessible. My investigation is zero, so that's a 19. 19. Okay, as you're copying the file over onto your thieves code device you notice really weird a really weird signal coming from this message like there's a lot of parts where the message like breaks into different sections like it's been split in the audio file itself but it's a full audio file it's very strange but without playing it you don't know anymore um okay so where did you guys want to go find iva yes so we can look into getting a because all we're missing right now is the uh, weapons master and the cook, right? Uh, yeah. Because we got the robo dude. Of the and maybe a backup rolls pilot or something. Yeah. Okay, so... so uh, we, we do now have an AI pilot. Where, um, where do you want to look for Ivo? Um, the meeting room? I guess we start there. Okay, we start heading towards the meeting room. All right, Cock, where y- you, you were... M- told that you're when you first arrived on the Aiden Keep you were told that your wardess was being held in Iva's office so is that where you want to go or do you want to go where you sensed it when you were in the meeting the other day uh go towards where I sensed the wardess okay so you start heading down lower into the facility past a bunch of workers something you notice as you're um, moving by, you can give me a, a perception roll to get a bit more information, but you notice a lot of people are in sort of a rushed state. People are moving, things are happening, like, uh, the people who work here are doing something important. Got a six. A six? You might occasionally see, like, some engineers working on some weaponry, but you're not sure. I mean, they mentioned something about an ambush. It's probably what they're working on but uh you don't get anything specific all right so you continue to head down further into the facility um you're in like the real dredges of the of the castle now uh it's really dark and like kind of smelly down here it's like the floor is really wet there's like steam coming out of different pipes and stuff and um you head around a corner where you you're pretty sure the meeting room is like right above this area and you see a small little, like, uh, c- cozy purple, like, office uh, area with 
like the furniture has been taken out of here so it's just a big open space and you just see your wardess sat in this room and in front of it it's like staring at something and you like try to like wrap your head around to see what it stood in front of and it's playing a large uh like uh, pinball machine <laughs> i didn't teach him to do that <laughs> is he winning uh he good <laughs> it's it's he's he's he, no <laughs> okay that, that's more understandable yeah it he's playing it in quotations <laughs> i just pat it on the head mm. <laughs> Papa. Love me, father. Alright, I leave him. <laughs> you you pat I'll him on him the head. I hand salt and then I leave. <laughs> you walk out of the room. <laughs> you can see some of uh, the crone's employees, like, uh, like movers and stuff. People are moving boxes up further into the, the upper chambers. Just, like, look at you as you leave the room. Like, that's what's in there? The fuck? <laughs> Hello. I thought that was storage. And then the end. <laughs> Alright, where would you go next? Mm. Back to the ship. It's time to leave. Bye. I'll ask the crones if they need any help. Uh. I mean, if you want to help us move some boxes, I, 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 I guess. But you're probably a bit more important than that, don't you think? I like boxes. I pick up the box. <laughs> you take it I out of like his three ass. Boxes. <laughs> it was mine. <laughs> oh, well, all right, follow us. And uh, they each only hold one box as you follow behind, and they lead you up uh, somewhere. All right, er Erebus, Devon, and I assume Brack yeah. is following as well. I would assume so as well. Is Jacob speaking? Oh, sorry, I was eating. Uh -huh. Are you following as well? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you hear, I'm sorry. You hear an old man uh, <laughs> talking to you. It never ends. It never ends. All right, so you guys head back to the meeting room that you, or Erebus, was in uh, yeah, the other two yesterday. Like, this part of the station, I've never been here before. So yeah, it's this big metal chamber with a projector in the middle that uh, can display, you know, holographic images. But as you head inside, you don't really see anybody, but you do see a lot of commotion coming from further down, um, down the hall. Like there's just people talking really loud. You can hear people being like, "Well, if a ship comes through here, we need," and they're like motioning on a map. Uh, of what exactly they need to do and they're like you know how like military people have those little dolls that they can play with to push around the map that's what they're doing um i guess we walk over there do we see iva you don't see iva uh you do see hello. some of the, the people she the... oh yeah you see some of the people that she introduced you to or er introduced erebus and cock to but uh you don't see her specifically hello everyone planning your ambush like you see the the scout, rather, who was silently sitting in the corner last time you saw him. Uh, we, are, mm, we are preparing for the capture of, uh, hopeful capture, I should say, of the tiefling. Mm. How is your m m mission pre preparation for, for Vagorok going? Well, we just need to acquire a few more members of crew. Ah, yes. I was hoping to speak to uh, your captain about that. Her name literally left my mind right before I said it. Wanted to say Valerie. That's that's not right. <laughs> huh. I Iva, there we go. Iva, yes. Iva is incredibly busy right now preparing. Um, I believe I heard something about uh, a, a, a bunch of people outside your ship. Maybe you should look there. Ah, thank you for the help. Thanks for the tip. Yes. I, like, look I don't at know any of you people, but you're preparing. preparing and use my stealth slash sleight of hand to try to give them better options. <laughs> uh, sure. You can roll stealth to see if uh, it helps them at all. I don't really have a great rolling surface, but let's see what I can do. So we got a 15 on the die, and then I have to add my modifier, which I believe is still 10. It is still 10. 25. 
All right, so I'll tell you what their current plan is, and then you can tell me if you have any ideas for them. Basically, they've had their engineers preparing their ships to go into what is essentially stealth mode. So they'll sit silently at the sort of edge of where they believe that Typhon ship is going to arrive. And then Rani, the communications officer, has called ahead to local mercenaries near... It's just outside of Zulkor Prime in between there and Big Toe. So they're going to be basically the backup in case Typhon tries to escape that way. And then Iva will be the one... S- on the main ship that tries to get on board Typhon's ship and she'll, you know, her and her, her squad will go in for the capture. Between Zoko Prime and Bitto. Mm-hmm. Have they thought about using some of, like, the debris from the um, ruins of Aeor or maybe even the asteroid fields as cover to hide their ships better? Or even rig one of them with... Uh, thrusters and have them crash into his ship. Rather says, oh, the the hiding idea is quite good. Uh, if, if they detect the thrusters, that will give away our whole plan, but I like the idea of hiding as debris as well. Just giving my expert stealth opinion. <laughs> quite, a, quite a lot of experience hiding from uh, unsavory types. Yes, well... He could even disappear in front of you right now if he wanted to. <laughs> yes, I could. <laughs> Boom, he's on the ceiling. 29. He does a backflip off the table onto the ceiling. Oh, good God. That man is sneaky. Um, okay. Uh, uh, I dropped down. Sorry about that. Just <laughs> enjoying my skill. Well, that was, that was something for sure. Uh, um, well, we will head to our ship. I hope your ambush goes well. Yes, we'll be headed out within a couple hours or so. Don't want to miss our opportunity. No, you do not. We will... Head for Vagarak once we have our crew and the hyperdrive installed. Good luck to you all. Good luck to you. Yeah, same to you. All right, you guys nod and begin heading back down towards the docking bay. Uh, you head down through the, the main hallway past the space bar. Um, you can see... Actually, uh, you guys can give me perception checks as you walk past it. Is that 21. 21. All right. Nine. No, that's the wrong screen. Uh, perception. 16. 16. What'd you get, Brock? One second. I got a nine. Okay, so. In a s- strange twist, Erebus and Brock don't notice anything in particular as they walk by. However, Devon... With your 21. Just as you guys are sort of walking past the entrance of the space bar, you see a very sheepish-looking Iva the Crone step out, sort of notice you guys, and then, like, walk backwards back into the bar to try to hide before any of you see her, but you manage to just see her. Just see her. Uh, I'll relay that information to the rest of the group. Uh... I think I just saw, I mean, I don't know her as well as you guys do, obviously, but I'm assuming that was Iva I just saw, and, uh, didn't really seem like she wanted to see us, so, uh... Any points in the direction of the bar? He is. Um, um, well, we have our info. She has a lot on the line. That's not... Aggravate our host more than necessary. Yeah. At the moment. Probably didn't get off on the right foot with her, considering I didn't attend the meeting that she wanted me to attend because I was shit faced. But you know, yes, yes, live and live, love and laugh. Then he left me past the bar. I'm just like, good luck, Iva. I don't say anything else and keep walking. All right, you guys complete your journey back to the main hangar bay and as that is happening you guys notice a group of well you notice two groups actually there are a bunch of crone employees you know handymen who are dragging boxes crates full of you know who knows what weaponry explosives onto a individual shuttle near the front of aid and keep and among them Passive perception-wise, Erebus, you notice Cock 
helping out, dragging stuff on board this shuttle, t- just acting as if he's one of the one of the guys. You know, they're all like cracking beers and talking and oh, oh how tough no, this work God. is. Um, and they're all having a great time as they do this. They're they've never hung out with a turtle before, so all these like human workers are having a great time trying to figure out what the fuck he is. Um, but as well, there is another group. Uh, when you make it to sort of the back half of the docking bay, just outside of your ship, the Bronze Phoenix, you notice a line of strangers standing around. And as you approach, you see that they're all different kinds of races from across the Omega Astria, and they sort of look nervously excited as if they're waiting for something important. Hello there. They all sort of nod and go, oh, yes. And you realize these are probably the people that Rather was talking about. Um, You walk up to the line of strangers, and they begin to introduce themselves. You see all kinds of people. Some look like cooks, others look like pilots. Uh, you see one or two that look like they might be former Ring Fleet uh, military. All of them have unique visual appearances and uh, skill sets and experiences uh, that could potentially benefit your crew. Um, as you wait, make your way down the line, there's about 15 people or so here. You notice there are a few very clear standouts from the group. Uh, they're at very least very eye-catching. Um, one of these figures is a tall Goliath that has several cybernetic implants that glisten under the docking bay's lights. He looks quite adept in a weaponry sense. Uh, another is sort of a shorter, rounder creature with a friendly smile. You see a Dwergar, heavy tattooed down the side of both arms, yet muscular in, in a strange way, and they have these piercing blue eyes that give off a no-nonsense attitude. So... Uh, I leave it to you guys. How would you like to conduct position interviews? Uh, do you have like a list of people and what they're skilled at that we could like look at? Uh, it, you can if you tell me what you're looking for. I can give you like a list of positions, and then we can role play interviews. All right. First, you I scream over to the people loading. Fuck. It's time to interview for open positions on the ship. I was the captain. I thought you might want to be over here. So I'm not making all the decisions myself. With We need your persuasive skills. I walk over like a very out-of-touch politician trying to be hip. <laughs> I love the young people. <laughs> How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? All right, everyone. If you would like to line up by profession, uh, we will begin interviews based on staffing needs. Okay. What order do you want them to line up in? Um, they are cooks, pilots, engineers, although you don't necessarily need those weapon specialists. Um, there's, You see one that looks like maybe a smuggler. You see a researcher, a special ops in the similar vein to what you and Reinhardt did before you got your own crew. Um, what do you believe we will need, boys? I only need a cook. I know... Uh, Leonard! I yelled to ship. Leonard, did you ever get our backup pilot operational? <laughs> you yell at the ship. Is it open? I thought it was open. Yeah, the the cargo hold is, is open. Like I stick my head in and yell. Okay, you yell, <laughs> Leonard, did you ever get a backup pilot? Operational. Cause wasn't he building a droid to be a pilot? Yeah, he was using our pilot and droid. Yeah. He was, was he banking a pilot, or was he just using the droid to do something? He said that he could make a pilot. You guys he, told him that it would be okay if he made an AI pilot. Yeah. We don't know if he has it yet, but that is his goal. But the last time you opened the cargo bay, you heard a voice speak to you and call itself COG. So, you oh. do know that. So COG is operational and a pilot. Yeah, I'll just say yes. <laughs> you tell us now. Sorry, I was very tired last time and forgot <laughs> something. Um, chefs first. Chefs first. Yep. Yeah, okay. we gotta have a master chef. 
type competition where we all acquire our favorite ingredients and they're allocated 30 minutes to make the finest meal possible. That is how we will determine who is the chef. <laughs> That's how you want to do it? We don't really have that amount of time. We don't? We don't have 30 minutes? Sure you uh, no. How long have we been on this castle? Uh, five years. Two days. Yeah, 30 minutes is too long. <laughs> okay, I, I love that idea, if that's what you guys want to do. Sure. So, so you can see three cooks step up towards the line. You see a about five foot tall middle-aged elf woman. You see a 35-ish looking human man uh, in white cooking attire. And then you see a like 6'4 silver-skinned orc, most likely in like his 40s. And he's got very long, straight black hair and green eyes that stare at you. And they all Hello. stand forward. Hello, you three. We, we have an intriguing proposition for you. In front of you are three culinary devices. <laughs> Wait, so where... We shall <laughs> I, I said have you brought them onto the ship into the kitchen and you're like you've <laughs> set up like a, a competition I for we, them? I said I say we yeah, right. the kitchen and we have them prepare the best meal they possibly can with the ingredients we have on the ship. So that's what they'll be working with. We're not gonna like get special stuff. Okay, well, that makes sense. What ingredients do you have on the ship? Uh, and salt. Rations, salt. Stale mix. Stale mix. Like bussin, bussin brass. Yes, sir. Yeah, rations, meat, rations, but they're Dothan meals, so they're like easy prep meals. 300 meat sticks, 300 roasted locusts, ingredients for 150 sandwiches, fruits and vegetables. Okay, yeah, they could do something. And then I will also participate because I also have cooking skills. <laughs> A mysterious, misty box of tentacles that cock this. <laughs> oh, yeah. You also got. You also have a. Uh, well, last you checked, it was alive, but a squid from Percival's ship you stole from his fridge. Um, <laughs> that's just in your backpack somewhere. <laughs> I'm squidward, I'm squidward, I'm like I'm squidward, squidward, squidward. It's alive. No, it's I'm very not. much dead at this point. Um, <laughs> he forgot <laughs> about it and died. <laughs> Included in the chef's competition, Andrew. Yep, I, I just slam it on the table. <laughs> Okay, so you guys are setting up this competition. The rest of the potential hires are just sat outside. Um, so you this learn that the... Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, the Occupos represents all the random shit we might bring you after emissions. Yes. <laughs> um, fuck, there was something There was something that I, Andrew just got recently that I was thinking about and that I forgot. Yeah, Andrew has a tendency to grab random shit, and I, I never know if he actually adds it to his inventory <laughs> or not. So I have to, like, when I'm going back and editing the videos, I'm like, fuck, I gotta do something with that. I totally forgot he grabbed that. Um, so you learn most that the, the. Most of the time I will. Okay. Right. You learn that the elf woman's name is Ina, Ina Madrin. The human man's name is Clifton. He's very not specific Eddie. that it's just Clifton. Um, and then. A orc. The orc is Grom, and he says, "I'm Grom from Fury," which uh, Devon would know is a settlement on Megrut. So you guys, you guys, you guys, yeah, you introduce them, uh, pretending that you're on a show on camera. While they cook, should we interview other people? Probably. Yeah. All right, let's want, interview. Leave, uh, culinary shit to me boys I yeah guess. You, you leave devon in the yeah, kitchen with the the three contestants. Watching How do we leave me them while they're cooking? because i'm actually a cook so i can what are you making what they do better well and you go go find a yeah i mean it's up to you guys i need to get some dice for this cooking show <laughs> should we have me do it because i have the chef's utensils proficiency i judge the contest you guys go find a weapon master I will leave that. Sounds like Nick really wants to touch really the wants. cooking competition. <laughs> I must consume food. Okay. I, I'm fine. All right. With, we, 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 we can, we we'll go find can split it between us. 
You could leave Airbus and Devon in the kitchen and then Cock and Brock could go interview people. Hey. Alright, let's do it. Let's see let's see what happens. Let's see what Cock and Brock and what and we, we come get. back with. <laughs> Come back, come back with back just with Oculus Oculus and Oculus 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 Oculus. the entire crew is just giant wardices. Um, <laughs> I found more guys. All right, they, so, they, uh, they, they can't steer the ship anyway. It's just a bunch of bugbears. More pinball machines. <laughs> okay, so hold on, I just want to see who's doing the best at the start of the cooking. Okay, so the the smaller elf woman immediately goes for the squid and starts boiling it and what she's making already has a great smell to it clifton looks panicked as fuck like he was not expecting to have to like cook immediately so he's like looking around at like the roasted locust and he's like slowly putting them on a on a piece of bread and he's like looking around at the other ones like oh i'm already fucked uh, and the orc is just sort of cons just doing his thing he's not really paying it paying attention to the other two. Not as impressive as Ina, but uh, Grom looks fine. Okay. Brack and Cock, you guys head back outside to where the rest of the contestants are sat around. You can tell as you exit back out, a few people have just left. As you you left them out here and took the cooks inside. But um, you still see some more people. So who, uh, what would you like to interview? What position? Uh, we'll look at the... The weapons masters first. All right, so you call forth the weapon specialists. Um, first person that walks forward is a tall tiefling man. Uh, he approaches. Do you want to interview them individually, or just look at all of them and then pick based on what they look like? Uh, we need individual interviews. Yeah, and there's a few weapon specialists, so um, the first one walks forward. This tall tiefling man. He wears sort of Boba Fett style armor with no helmet um, literally just picture either Boba Fett or the Mandalorian uh, but he is the his his tiefling skin is actually co closer to that of like a drow like it's like pure black um, but he carries a strange looking weapon on his back it looks like a, a spear with two small cannons attached to the end um, I already like this guy <laughs> <laughs> and the at the very bottom of that spear there's like a trigger that you can pull I taught myself how to kill in order to escape my troubled past so I'm very adept at what I do mm -hmm. I'm sure we could have some great training yes I'm sure I would love to train with a bugbear alright so where do you take him to interview him where are we right now are... just like stood on the ramp of the cargo okay. bay cargo hold uh, we go to like a corner of the cargo hold where I I made I put a bunch of boxes in a in an attempt to make it look like an office. Okay. <laughs> you stacked boxes and you're sitting on boxes. Exactly. All right. So you walk into this this boxed office and he's like, "Oh, very nice," and slowly sits down. <laughs> looking at the two of you. Well, I'll start by saying my name is Yina, Yina Monstar. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Cock. And I'm very excited to potentially join the crew and fight the evil pirates and defeat all enemies in my path. How do you feel about ripping spines out? Hmm. Well, I am not typically one to use my fists so much, but uh, he grabs his weapon off his back and sort of shows it to you in, in both hands. This is quite adept at uh, taking a head off or two. Hmm, yes. So you're not against ripping out spines. This is very important. Oh, no. If, very good. If, if that is what you want to do, then uh, I, will, I will watch and laugh. Good. That is that is good. How are you with uh, large weaponry, cannons and such? Yes, uh, ship weaponry. Well, I obviously can fire any sort of ship weapon. It's uh, 
kind of my thing, to be honest. This, this here weapon is basically that, but in a smaller version. He smiles. Yeah. Have you ever seen a man's head fly off from being blasted so hard? Ooh. No, it's usually more of the disintegration variation. But a that fun, sounds fun. A fun trick I try to do is where I slide up under them, and then I fire it, and their head goes shooting up into the sky. And by the time it comes back down, I put my hands out, and I catch it, and I just kiss it. Mm. Oh, I scribble something down on <laughs> my hand. Very serious. If you were alone on the ship and a group of strangers boarded, what what would you do? What do they look like? <laughs> <laughs> Different. That's wrong. Uh, let's say, hypothetically, ah, ha, ha, they looked very muscular, hairy, uh, old people. Yes. Well, the first thing I would do is use my expert intellect to determine whether it was the crew in disguise, and if I determined them to be truly an enemy, I would not hesitate to blow their heads off from below. Hmm. I would get down He's under them, and I would blow them blow so <laughs> hard. <laughs> I'd love to see a head deflect off the them, ceiling of the ship. Blow them. Got yes. It. Right below them, so I can blow them. Nice. Yes. Good. All right. And uh, the last question that I need, I'm not sure about Breck, but uh, what is your biggest fear? Mm. Or a a big fear that you have. doesn't have to be your biggest. <laughs> What's like your top, maybe <laughs> one in the top ten of fears? Well, I suppose my biggest fear, it have kind of overcome it at this point. I, I haven't always been a, a fighter. Uh, for a long time I was stuck on a farm and I feared that I would become nothing in this world. I didn't like what, I didn't like my former profession. Uh, but now I get to do all kinds of crazy stuff so I suppose my biggest fear is losing this. Losing this feeling. Great answer. Uh, Brack, you have anything else for this man? Oh no, I already like him. <laughs> Alright. Personally. I write some more down and I stand up and hold out my hand. He stands Thank you. Up. And uh we will we'll be back to you soon. Absolutely. He walks out of the cargo hold. Do you want me to just send the next person in? That would be lovely. Alright, so you see the dr Dwergar that I mentioned earlier. Oh wait, before we move on, I wanna do another roll to see how the cooks are getting on. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. We need our Cue, first uh, violent interview. Oh my god! Okay. Okay, so this is what happens. So, Grom the Orc, he's... He, he didn't start strong. He's not really making that much of improvement. If anything, he's getting worse. He's basically making a basic sandwich, but he forgot to put a lot of... <laughs> The, the desired ingredients on, so if right now it's just a very dry sandwich. Um, Ina, who started off really well, her cook thing was very, uh, smelled great. She was preparing some of the spices she was going to put on the squid and totally forgot about it, and it's just burnt to a crisp, uh, boiled to a crisp in the pot. And she's like, no, 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 and like hopping up and down. <laughs> Meanwhile, Clifton, the more... Locusts he stacks on that sandwich, the the nicer it looks. Like he he's really <laughs> doing something nice with it to the point where you feel like if cooking happened to be a dice roll, he probably rolled a natural twenty. Um, and it just looks really nice. Whatever he's doing, he's like he like there just cuts to a shot of him doing like the salt bay thing over the sandwich, and uh, everybody's turned on. Yes, yeah, he's all locusts just falling onto a piece of bread. Um, it's great. All right, so in the in the interview, I'm like I'm whispering to Devon, that locust sandwich looks more and more appealing. My <laughs> Compared uh, to everything else. I can't wait to put my lips around that, Pod. <laughs> Where's it kind of hurt? <laughs> blowing right. from underneath. <laughs> right. 
uh, the Dwargar <laughs> approaches. Uh, they are a, a stout and stocky creature standing at just over four feet tall. Despite their small stature, they possess a sense of power and confidence that emanates from them. They're, they're a Dwargar, so their skin is like this dark gray, almost black like the Tiefling, but not quite. And they wear short hair slicked back a heavy tattooing on their arms that appears to be a series of intricate designs of angels that are like woven together and the light gray ink stands out in a stark contrast against their natural skin color their eyes this sort of shade of piercing blue seems to size you up as they regard you and walk in between the boxes into your makeshift office overall before they even say anything this Dwargar gives off the air of competence, capability, someone who knows how to gets, th th gets things done. And as they sit down on the box that the tiefling was just sat in, they just go, Brulin. Brock. Brock. They nod. We, would, we nod. <laughs> <laughs> and sink you all nod again. <laughs> all right, tell, me, uh, tell me a bit about yourself. Former ring fleet. For the well, before I was kicked out for some things I didn't do, but uh, ultimately it was for the best. Is now I get to travel the galaxy as a wandering hermit and help where I can. I have an experience with hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, as well as other forms of weaponry, specifically ship weaponry, but. Uh, I choose not to carry a gun with me, as I find them quite primitive. I have other ways of... Do you carry any other weapons with you, or just weapons in general? Primitive I have. weapons. They reach behind and pull out a small rock. This gets the job done. It's like a flat stone. They put it back. Ooh. I furiously scribble something. <laughs> Are you more into hand-to-hand -hand combat? Personally? Yeah, I um, I spent a couple of years after the Ring Fleet let Ring Fleet let me go, fighting in arenas, trying to make as much money as I could. Ultimately, that life was a bit too day to day. I I wanted to take some time for myself, try to figure out who I am. And it led me to joining up with the crones, and hopefully it will lead to stopping the evil at the edge of the galaxy. And what's your opinion on blood, guts, you know, <laughs> brutal deaths? Well, that's a strange question, but I understand why you ask, as this journey will most likely be par perilous. Um, I have never felt killing was why I fight. I'm not seeking to destroy my enemies because I have some want to destroy them. I destroy them so I can protect the people that I need to protect. And if that leads to a gruesome death, so be it. But it is not what I seek when I enter the field of combat. Good, good. I take the paper that Cock has and start writing things on it. <laughs> <laughs> I just take the pen right off his hand. <laughs> takes the pen and he yoinks my hand to write it. So the, I yeah, basically the, use his hand to write it. Yeah. <laughs> they just note this very strange behavior. So you are physically able to rip a spine out, correct? I was going to bring it up. Well, I don't know. I've never done that. I'm sure you are. You look pretty capable. I reach over and write something on my hand as well. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and uh, my final question of the of the interview, uh, biggest fear? Uh, my biggest fear, wow. Well, I suppose my biggest fear is being stuck in the same place for too long. You both can roll me insight rolls. Fifteen. Nineteen. 
All right, you both get the sense from this person. The, the calmness is definitely a, a, a certain level of confidence that they have. You, you truly believe that they have the, the skill to do this job. Um, you don't think that they were being totally truthful with that last answer, but less because they're like going out of their way to lie and more just like they aren't ready to admit to themselves what their greatest fear is. All right, we will be in touch in a bit. If you could send the next person in on your way out, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. They stand up, and they begin to walk back through the boxes, and then they turn their head back. I go by Iron Fury. These days, Brulin's my birth name. And then they turn back around. I scratched something out a little too hard on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and then you suck your thumb from the blood. Um... <laughs> All right, hell yeah! This is this this is the the best part of the whole the whole uh, campaign. Rolling to see how the chefs do. Oh my god! Oh my god! Well, this this is it's utter chaos in the kitchen on board the Bronze Phoenix. Um, Ina has pulled the sort of completely destroyed squid out of the pot and she's begun chopping it regardless trying to look around to make sure you guys aren't paying attention but you clearly are and she's just trying to make it work Clifton, whatever he did with that sandwich uh, he's just completely fucked it now. All the bugs are beginning to pour out of the sides the bread is being eaten by some of the bugs are still alive I guess <laughs> the bread's being eaten by the bugs and he's like freaking out trying to like squash them with a huge mallet as this is happening and meanwhile, uh, the sandwich that um, the sandwich that Grom was making, he's like about to cut it in half, and then he chops one of his own fingers off. <laughs> um, he rolled the natural one. Devon, blood would sandwich. You to help him with your medical. <clears throat> I'm I'm okay. I'm fine. I don't need any help. But <laughs> clearly, just oh chopped the finger. Off. <laughs> We're all just looking in horror. Everyone's trying to pretend like that didn't just happen. Devon, your, your medical capabilities would be very useful right now. Yes, I walk up and uh, I do a little jig. And uh, let's see, I will cast... Uh, I will cast level... Level 2 Cure Wounds on man's to try and put that... I, like, grab the, the piece of his finger and, like, put it back on him and, like... <laughs> Try and like fuse it back on. Okay, how much HP does level two cure wounds heal? That will do. Let me roll that real quick. Four, three, so seven plus nine, sixteen health back. All right, so the finger f fuses back on. It's a bit wonky, but it's it's back on. It's not bleeding anymore. Uh, 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 thanks. Uh. I think I'm gonna have to start my sandwich over, though. He looks at the bloody mess on the, the counter. Yes. Uh, here, let me help you clean your station up. Uh, I've got to make sure things are sanitary. <laughs> I, I I just like drop my suit of armor that consumes blood on the table and sort of just swipe it, and you just watch the blood disappear. <laughs> Sham! Wow. <laughs> blood! Wow. Yeah. You just All hear right, everyone witnesses. He like what? So you just like put your chest down on the table and... <laughs> no, I, like my arm. I just put an arm down and sort of swipe across the table and it disappears. Nice. Alright, so it's just utter chaos in the in the kitchen. Meanwhile, down below in the cargo bay, you guys hear... <coughs> as walking up, you see a gray-skinned goblin. No taller than, like, four feet, three ten, something like that. And he walks in wearing the sci-fi equivalent to, like, a camo Nike tracksuit. He walks up towards the box. It's a little bit too big for him to get up, so he just stands next to it. Pork, pork! Shooty! Pork, pork! Fight strong! Fast! Better than dead bodies! Make dead bodies! And he smiles. I give him a thumbs up. <laughs> the smile gets bigger. <laughs> All right, uh... I ask him, how many dead bodies? I see big dead body and little small dead bodies. Big explosion. <laughs> Everything explode. Everything how many spines explode. ripped out? Explode. One big spine, spine, two spine, ten spine, a hundred spine. Big blowy. Blowy? Big blowy. 
And every time he talks, his arms like shake. Like he's super excited to be saying the things he's saying. <laughs> big fight every time. Everything. Everything dead. Big blood all over the walls. Big explosion. Chloe and explosion. Got he it. makes a gun with his hand and just starts <laughs> shooting you both. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> I You're look both at him for stunned like in silence. Ten, I look at him for ten seconds, and then lean in and ask explosion question mark. Everything I see. Mm, good, good, good. <laughs> Biggest fear. You, you ask him this, and his eyes just go wide. He's like looking at the floor. His hands shake erratically. He's not sure how to answer this. Uh, no boo, no no blowy, no boom. <laughs> scared of no blowies as well good 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 all right uh yeah well, that's all i had rack you got anything i like Rack's to think about the okay. hundred spines ah, yes. <laughs> that's all it takes <laughs> I, I circled the hundred spines portion <laughs> also i didn't catch a name uh what, what, what is what is your name pork pork blowy ah yes of course blowing the name good good, good. thank you very much uh, if there's anybody else, you can send them in. Uh, otherwise, we'll be out to talk to you. He does a back backflip, and then walks out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cedric. And uh, you guys begin to hear vooch, 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 as a towering figure begins to walk through the boxes into your small little office, and. You can't help but... Even the the two most badass of the team can't help but feel a bit intimidated by the sheer size of the Goliath that stands before you. Towering about 7'5", with a massive build that looks like he could easily overpower most beings. And despite his rough gray skin, his well-shaped face it actually makes him relatively attractive with a bald head and piercing brown eyes that seem to see you right through you. You notice that, despite his size, as he sort of maneuvers through the boxes, he is actually quite nimble. His cybernetic limbs are whirring and clicking, and they assist him in his movement. And you can't help but notice the array of weapons strapped all over his body. You can see two rifles on his back, knives all up and down his legs, a belt of ammo and explosives, making it clear that he's not someone to be trifled with and the sight of him alone is enough to send chills down your enemy's spine. And he just sits down slowly on the box and stares at the two of you. Name? Zaylith Jelen. Ah, very good. I can't help but notice you, uh, seem to be a bit enhanced. Was that a personal choice or out of necessity? <sighs> My last company put forth the required credits to turn me into this. <clears throat> Is there... Why did, why did you leave? They let you go, or finish your required duties? Yeah. Something like that. Alright, great. Insight roll. <laughs> uh -huh. Twelve. Another nineteen. <laughs> Twelve, Brock. Yeah, probably something like that. Cock. <laughs> There's... He, 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 he's not giving you the whole story there at all. <laughs> Just crosses his arms. Sits back. If you were alone on the ship and some unsavory figures were to forcefully bored what would your uh, what would your first action be hmm forcefully bored well if I was quick enough I would jettison them through the airlock if I wasn't I suppose I would make my stand killing all of them and if they were to injure me I would take a prisoner 
I like prisoners. I like death. <clears throat> Speaking of death, uh, death. <laughs> <laughs> My voice cracks it. He's so scary. <laughs> Cock is just <laughs> trembling. <laughs> Speaking of death, uh, you are physically able to pull out a spine, I would presume. <laughs> yeah, I could pull out a few things, to be honest. Ooh. So more than a spine, if need be. Couple legs, couple arms, maybe their eyes. Oh, Whatever it takes. Best. Rip out their throat through their anus. Ooh, well, that sounds Ooh. very nice. I Thank like you for it. the description. Uh, Brack, you got anything for this bad boy? No, I think I think you've covered pretty much everything that's really important. Especially right, then. Uh, my final question that I ask all our contestants: uh, biggest fear. <laughs> I don't have any fears. Ah. But I have some questions for you folk. Of course. What's the alcohol situation on board your ship? I am a raging alcoholic and I just bought a ton. Same. Except for buying it. <laughs> That'll work. One more question. How many books do you have on board? Uh, I don't think I own a single book. I have a bunch of rocks with ancient writing on them. <laughs> I have uh, some elven poetry that I took from somewhere. That's, that's pretty much the closest thing I have to a book. Mm. Interesting. Well, it's been fun, Ooh. fellas. He slowly stands up, staring. Well, Brock in his eyes. He slowly backs away towards the exit, staring <laughs> Brock directly in the eyes, and then just walks away. <laughs> Out of the cargo hold. I think he wants me. <laughs> Finally, yeah. somebody wants me. Oh my god. It's so wonderful. Fantastic. Uh, you have a favorite among people we've seen so far? Personally, it was between the first two. Ah. The dedication I... in, the, in the second one was by far very impressive. But I do enjoy the first ones want to kill, like to kill. Ah, yes. The, uh, I feel like the last one here might, might be a great use in ways other than being on my ship, and, uh, yeah. Personally, the I alcoholism is great. <laughs> yeah, that and the fact that he might try to kill us if he wanted to. Yeah, that that's a bit less great, for sure. Yeah, he could easily take this ship if we just let him in. Yeah, then I'd have to then I'd have to move him. That wouldn't be great. I mean, for him, it'd be kind of <laughs> great for me, but you know, it'd be fun. Just so another. You're really say. funny, but uh, I'm kind of leaning towards the second one right now. Yeah, I believe the, you would be uh... on speed dial. Yeah, me too. <laughs> For you, more sexual reasons than me, I'm sure. Mm. All right. I'm gonna poke my head out of my poorly made office and at, look around for the researcher. Okay. Also, I mean, you guys, you guys know this, but you could hire multiple of the same position if you wanted to. It would just yeah. mean. You, you, you guys have the funds. I mean, shit. Erebus got like <laughs> 20,000 credits on the fucking Star Forge. I think you guys will be all right. Let's just go gambling again. Yeah. Gambling? Did anyone say gambling? <laughs> all right, you stick your head outside. Um, you see a half-elf woman. Uh, sort of short, cropped silver hair. Uh, wearing a practical white jumpsuit. Various tools strapped to her belt. And you assume that to be the researcher. Excuse me, miss, could you come over here? Oh, uh, absolutely. She begins walking towards you. As she gets closer, you can see that she has a small scar above her right eyebrow. But you don't think anything of it, and uh, I assume you lead her, lead her back to the office? Yes. All right. You walk back between the boxes. She follows. Oh, well, I'm, I'm 
very excited to get this opportunity. I wasn't sure if you would even give me the time of day. I'm uh, Dr. Lierenvolt. Lierenvolt. Well, yes. I'm Cock, and nice this is you. my esteemed colleague, Breck. Yes, well, I, I'm very excited about the potential of uh, getting on board your ship and helping you in any sort of way I could, if you'd like me to. I, I'm also uh, a bit of a, a researcher myself, so I uh, have interest in the sciences of the world, and perhaps that's useful to you. I uh, have some things maybe I want to look at myself, but uh, I don't want to be selfish in this moment. This is a, uh, <clears throat> uh, what, what would you say is the number one most exciting part that you would look forward to if hired? Well, I've heard that you're headed to Vegarok next, is that true? That is the current plan, yes. Yes, okay, well, there is a, a strange phenomenon on the planet where the weather has almost broken, where there, the rain has stopped. What was once a, a lush, jungle-like planet has turned into a dry, hellish desert, and uh, there are still places in the lowlands on Vekarok, where these jungles, uh, jungle formations spawn fresh fruits and, and strange plants that give off these magical powers. And I was wondering, maybe if that is where you allow me to go with you, I could look into this and potentially figure some things out. It's, it's very strange. Only the natives seem to be drawn to them, but they're very, very useful, these, these strange fruits. Ah. What are the what are the useful properties? I assume from ingestion? Yes, well, um the the natives uh found that they have quite strong healing capabilities, but there's other things and I've heard that they use them they essentially trade them with the off world traders to get things like water uh down to their uh tribes and their villages because the sky cities typically take most priority and then if it's not the sky cities sky cities it's the the criminal undertone of the, the lowlands that are stealing most of their supplies so they have to get it elsewhere so if you have these magical ah oh, sorry i'm i'm rambling um basically they they're very important and the natives are the only ones that seem to pay attention to them not saying i want to you know step on the natives toes or anything. I, I'm not one of those kind of people. I'm just saying it'd be intriguing is all. Of course. So, if I get this right, you're more intrigued with Vegarok currently than uh, joining the crew. Then. Well, there are other things throughout the galaxy that I've had my eyes on for a while, but seeing as Vegarok is your next stop, it's the thing I've focused most on in my files. Uh, she, like, holds out a folder that she's been holding on to and she's like, uh, I, I don't know if you want to take a look at the, this is just some things I wrote, some notes. Uh. Yeah, I'll take the folder. Alright, so basically she's been doing a lot of research on specifically the tabaxi tribes of the lowlands and trying to figure out because the, the tabaxi they're, they're very tribalistic in terms of they split up uh, in terms of like fur color, which is really weird uh and kind of racist but they, they that's just how they how they choose to to do things it's the ones that live in the sky cities that don't really give a shit about that stuff um but the the tribalistic tabaxi and they have certain mm, characteristics about them that she's intrigued in specifically some of <laughs> how do i say this in a not creepy way specifically the young <laughs> men of the tribes mm. all right i hand it back to her she takes it uh, anything in intrigue you, or...? Indeed. Very... you're very thorough in your work. Yes, I... you only get these opportunities so often, I want to take advantage. Of course. Not take advantage of you, take advantage of the huh? opp opportunity. Uh, sorry. Good. Uh, Brack, you got anything on this? Oh. <laughs> How many spines have you ripped out today? <laughs> Speaking of Brack, uh, are you physically able to f rip out a spine? Have you ever experienced spine removal? Uh, uh, uh me? It um, could be with tools. You don't have to use your bare hands. Yes, I've, 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 had, I've done a few procedures in terms of um, experimentation, but those are uh, quite 
These these decades ago, quite top secret uh, things, uh, things I'm not so proud of. I, anyway, so you're yes. saying you're against it? Uh, in a situation where the person is defenseless, yes, I am against it. Assuming they're not a threat. I take Cox's hand that has the pen, starts writing things again. <laughs> this bitch cannot come on board. <laughs> She's not like let her on the level. How dare she? Okay. And uh, last, last question for me: greatest fear. Oh, greatest fear! Oh, very intriguing. Um, well, uh, I grew up on Elfir in a in a, a town that was not too far from um, the uh, Taylith Mountains, where the uh, underground dwarfs roam. And when I was very young, I late at night, I was sat up in my room staring out the window, and I saw this dwarven bandit group uh, and they stole uh, a couple of people from our village. I guess kidnapped would be the word that people typically use. Um, and yes, ever since I've just had a strange fear of dwarves and I've, I've tried to fight it, but I, I can't get over it. I, I, I don't know if that will be a problem, but uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. I'm just a little racist. <laughs> Oh, little racism never hurt anybody. <laughs> little racism never hurt nobody. <laughs> well, none of us currently are dwarves, so... Uh, <laughs> currently. I, I might be a dwarf tomorrow, but we'll see. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate you giving me the interview regardless. I wasn't even sure if I would get that much, so... I thank you for coming down. Is there anyone you'd like me to send in? Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. They're, they're doing the chef... Oh yeah, I forgot show. about the fucking chefs. <laughs> Let's see how they're doing. Okay. That's not so bad. <laughs> okay, so... I Ina, need a chef interview from Devon. Ina and C Clifton have begun to pull things back together. Ina has gone away from the squid. It's done. It's, it's She's not getting anything out of it. So she's gone on to the sandwich and has begun working with those ingredients instead. Clifton has managed to subdue the the locust uprising and has gotten back to uh, getting the sandwich in order and it, he looks to be almost done. Meanwhile, Grom is beginning to slice his sandwich again and cuts off another fucking finger. God he cuts off two it. fingers this time. Oh. He rolled another natural one. Did you help man's again? Grom. <laughs> I'm going to heal you, but <laughs> I don't for your own personal safety, I'm going to be kicking you off the island. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, please, I can do this. I don't need those fingers. They're holding me back. No, they're not. No. You can't even hold a knife without them. I've got another hand. No, are you sure? He looks at it. Friend, three fingers. We need a we need a, a chef that has all. <laughs> Appendages intact. Perhaps that is able to handle cooking but... under pressure, for we may be in firefights. Yes, and we need to subdue I don't the want enemy to... with great food. Damn He's right. Amazing. How else are we supposed to bring people on this ship? Get their guard down, unless they're being served a delicious meal. What if they look down at their meal and they see a toenail? Or a fingernail <laughs> in their salad. Yeah, a whole finger in this case. God damn it. Drum, you're fine. Get the head out. Persuasion but first, roll. I will heal you with level, level 2 cure wounds. Okay, and then give me a persuasion roll. Let's see how well Grom Seven. That. One. That heals 17. And what do I have to roll? A persuasion, persuasion. roll. So you, you put it. his fingers back on as one. you're saying this. I got a, I got a, a seven. I got a twenty-five. All right, so Grom grabs his sandwich, throws it into the trash, takes the knife, stabs it into the counter. You people don't know good taste anyway. And he starts licking the blood off his hand as he walks out. Blood isn't good taste. It's blood. And then I wipe the suit for the blood. <laughs> All right, more blood for the blood god. Exactly. All right, and as as that happens, Clifton just. He didn't even notice Grom left, he just puts his hands out. Alright, I finished it. It's beautiful. It's a locust surprise. 
the surprise it's full of locusts. <laughs> uh, yes, we, we, could, we could tell that. It is just a tower of locusts between two pieces of uh, pieces of bread. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Ina, the older woman, is rushing to finish her sandwich. As you that know. happens. <laughs> yeah. Please take your time. Do not cut off any fingers. We're not in that big of a hurry where three of your fingers need to be cut off. Oh, don't worry, dear. I, I wouldn't dream of it. Okay. All right. So you guys, you guys continue your cooking show. Hey, we've eliminated one person. <laughs> Meanwhile, back. Uh, uh, who did you want uh, Liren to grab for you, by the way? Uh Conk and Brack? Uh, we need an engineer. I mean, there's a bleach. <laughs> Alright, so she walks outside. Um, and slowly approaching, a hooded figure walks in. Sort of a young adult tabaxi woman. She, like, sticks her head inside. Um, you, you request an engineer? I, I, apparently I'm the only one that stayed, so, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. She walks in. Are you probably... <clears throat> So long as you actually want this position. Which <laughs> uh, so would yeah, look you like you did. You see a uh, tigress tabaxi with blue crystal eyes. Smaller frame, which isn't necessarily great for an engineer, but uh, she does have the tools on a belt equipped, so she sits down. Uh, uh, hello, I, I, I'm, I'm Wisps. I'd like to be your engineer. This is the, the, the Bronze Phoenix gig, yeah? Uh, yeah, the Bronze Phoenix gig. Can you play any instruments? Um... Or sing? N no. Is that something I can't that... can't play any instruments. Okay. Oh, no. I, I know magic. A kind kind of. A li little magic. Uh, could you show me? Could you give me a demonstration of some kind of magic? Um, yeah. Uh, do you have, like, a, a small item you don't really care about all that much? <laughs> Let's see. I'll take off one of my rings. Okay. She places it on the box she was just sitting on and pulls out a small hammer and just <laughs> and just dents the ring. She looks at you, smiles, places the ring in her hand, waves her other hand over it, and then hands it back to you, and it's completely fixed. Ah, useful. Mm, attractive. <laughs> then you look at the box she was sat on, and it's still got a dent in it. <laughs> and she, like, sits on it trying to cover it up. <laughs> I love that box. That box had a family. So, you can't play any instruments. Can you rip out a spine? What? Uh, I don't think so. Is that can't something you need engineers spine. to do in the space? <laughs> well, uh, I won't say that's a, that's a point for you. Oh. But, uh... Engineering skills, you seem your magic is seem will help with that absolutely. Uh, are you a good teacher? Engineering oh, wise, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I know the tricks of the trade. Uh, I could definitely give some tips. I mean, since some of my abilities comes from the arcane, other people didn't have said abilities. It might make it a little more difficult for me to understand what they need to know. But uh, I could definitely give it a shot. Good. good. And uh, hypothetically speaking, of course, if uh, our pilot was to steal the ship and you happened to be on board and then placed you into a magical slave cage, what would you do? <laughs> As you finish saying that, you can see between the boxes of the office that you've set up, you see somebody stumbling through the cargo hold. <sighs> through the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, hold on, let me roll something. <laughs> So yeah, you just hear uh, and then half the wall behind this tabaxi just caves in and falls onto the floor. Uh, what? And you can see Timbly Bibbs, drunk out of his mind, holding a beer bottle. Uh, sorry, boss. How did you get off the ship? What? How did you get off the ship? And he starts walking towards the ladder. I can't hear you! <laughs> Starts climbing the ladder, falls down <laughs> off the ladder, gets back up, dusts his knees off, and starts climbing again. <laughs> um... I don't think I can magically fix that. Ah, uh, no, nobody I, I know how to fix him, and uh, we need something a bit different than that for him. 
needs a lack of a spine. Um, <laughs> she, like, points at the boxes behind her. Do you want me to f put those back? Oh, sure, if you'd like to. Okay. She, like, gets up, rubs her hands together, and starts wiggling her fingers, and then individually, one by one, the boxes start stacking very slowly. It takes about 40 seconds, but eventually the wall is put back together. Very nice. And she sits down on the still dented box. <laughs> well, this has been eventful so far. Yes. <laughs> I immediately forgot my question as soon as she spoke. <laughs> <laughs> You asked her about um, if there was a basically if there was a mutiny on on board. The right. Timbley Bibbs ruined everything. God damn it, Timbley, you're fired. Oh yeah, now I remember. Uh, so you're you're very adept at fixing things. Are you adept at creating new things? Oh, uh, uh, like, like what sort of thing you you, you thinking? Let's say I wanted a. Custom alcohol dispensing rig created. Um, I mean, it'd probably take more than just me, but I could definitely draw something up for that. I, I'm not a brewer myself, but uh, oh, we supply the alcohol. We just need the the system for moving it about. Yeah, I I suppose I could give it a shot. Well, that is a point for you. Very good. Uh, Brack, you got anything? Hmm. I like her. <laughs> Speaking of not being able to rip out a spine, would you be uh, open to learning? Uh, I think it's best if I just stay I on the ship. I see potential. <laughs> <laughs> we can bring something with a spine on the ship. <laughs> the cracks in her smile are beginning to show. <laughs> Ah, very good. And last question. What is your greatest fear? Oh. Um. I, I don't know about fear so much, but I... And this might be a deal breaker. I do not like planets. I grew up on a ship, lived for a few months on a planet when I was super young, and my family were slain by a giant purple worm. Most of my family, anyway. A couple of us survived, and uh, I've been on ships ever since, so uh, I would prefer to remain on board the ship when we travel to planets, if that's all right. This uh, giant Alaskan bull worm wouldn't happen to be the sea gorilla, would it? Oh, no, no. Uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a giant worm in the... A giant planet worm. Yeah, planetary, planet. ah, yes. planetary worm. Uh, no, if <laughs> Now, if the sea gorilla th killed my parents, I definitely would be staying off of ships. <laughs> of course, of course. All right, then, uh, very good. Thank you for staying. Your chances, because even no one else is here, are uh, <laughs> pretty high. Your we'll chances are higher because uh, you have no life. Goodbye. <laughs> um, there's one other person out there. Do you want me to send them in? Ah, uh, yeah. That'd, that'd be lovely. All right. I'll, uh, I'll let him know. She walks out. <laughs> Thank God, uh, Timbley didn't spill the, <laughs> spill the, spill the beans that you guys haven't paid him yet. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. So finally, well, hey, actually, before we, Andrew Bibbs has a personal contract with just Andrew. It's Andrew's responsibility to pay him. True. All right, both sandwiches are finished up in the kitchen. You have the locust surprise and just like a normal meat and veg. Sandwich. All right, cut both sandwiches in half. We taste locust first, cleanse our palates, then we'll taste the other one. Hell yeah. Get the dramatic music ready. <laughs> Zoom in on both contestants. Perfectly and capture the fear in their eyes. A bead of sweat drips down their face. Take a bite. Well, Clifton, we will see this sandwich. What are its contents as we dig into it? Locust, I think. <laughs> All right, so uh, I got the bread down. 
and then I started just throwing locusts on there because they were already roasted, so I figured they're probably filled with flavor. I realized halfway through that I probably put too many locusts on. I think I put some locusts on that weren't roasted and were just like around the ship because they started fighting back. But once I was managed to once I managed to stop their scourge, I put a bunch of mayo on the top slice of the piece of bread and hopefully it tastes like a sandwich. Alright, so you guys take a bite? Yes. You bite into the sandwich and the only word you can think to describe what you're tasting is just that this sandwich is incredibly mid. <laughs> Fuck. Soggy. Come on. <laughs> a lot of, lot of little legs and... You fell off. Antenna. Washed. And some wings. A hint of mayo. And some bread. But a lot of locusts. I'm getting a lot of locusts. These were cooked. And they're still raw. What's <laughs> <laughs> that? trying to kill someone. me. Shut him down. He did tell us that he put some live locusts in here. I assume all the flavor. Flavor enhancer. Uh, There's no goddamn seasoning. He put my You had all that time, and there's no seasoning. Where's the salt? Where's the pepper? Where is the pepper? 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 Paprika? Um, what a shot. I'm sorry I let you guys down. At least you didn't cut off any fingers. Yeah. That's true. That should help my score. And plus, I mean, my sandwich is going to be way more exotic than hers. He says, pointing at the elf woman. Ah, yes. Yeah. Let's see what uh, you've come up with. You uh, improvised seemingly very well, given uh, the disaster the that you Yes. So, what have you prepared for us? I'm sorry, dears, that the squid didn't work out, but <clears throat> basically what I've got is uh, I found some slices of ham in your cupboards. I hope that they're... Our cupboards? Why were they in there and not our refrigerator? Yeah, I was wondering about that uh, myself, but I uh, did some little magic tricks, if you know what I mean. She winks at you. I was a, a mage in a past life, and um, I've got some veggies, uh, some greens on there. Couldn't find any cheese, mm. which is a shame, but uh, hopefully it tastes better than a bunch of fucking locusts. We uh, shall see. I guess we'll find out. Mm. <laughs> Alright, so you guys take a bite of this sandwich, and she's just like, her eyes wide. Tr trying to watch both of your faces as you bite into it. Despite its lack of real pizzazz or any sort of, um, you, you know, exciting ingredients, what she has made here tastes as about as good as you can expect for something to be made on board a ship. This is actually quite fine eating considering the ingredients she used. She did a lot with very little. You know? Given uh, the circumstances and given what you were, uh, given what was at your disposal? We more are, than just uh, one ingredient. Yes. It's, uh, this is quite nice. I must uh, commend whatever pizzazz you added is uh, clearly shining through the sandwich. So, well done. Oh, that, that brings a, a warmness to my heart to hear that. You hear Clifton from behind you guys. Should I just leave now, or, like... Oh, we still have to make a debate. Uh, we're getting our little huddle. We still I have speak. a commercial break to head to before uh, before we make our decision, Clifton. Stay there. I gotta pause, yeah. The, the new chef on the Bronze Phoenix is... <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. <laughs> uh, it's it's Dana, Clifton. Uh, you did your best. Uh, I think you used just uh, a few fistfuls too many locusts. Um, the punch is A good there. sandwich requires more than two ingredients. That a is good correct. sandwich must be comprehensive with all elements of the sandwich and, coming and together. And you can definitely tell like you uh, panic there in the beginning, not really quite knowing what to do. For a brief moment, that sandwich looked like it was the best thing I've ever seen. But then you just kept adding locusts. Presentation um, isn't everything, Clifford. Clifton. I'm calling you Clifford. <laughs> I am so sorry. I know that you are very particular about your name, and I don't mean any disrespect, but we will be going in the other direction. It's fair. I saw the locusts and got so excited with the idea of a locust sandwich that I became... I got tunnel vision. 
and I didn't think about the taste or any of that. So ultimately, it makes sense. I truly believe that if I were given another chance, I would do better. But you have to make a decision, and uh, you probably got the right person. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity, fellas, and uh, maybe, maybe next time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we admire your self-reflection. That is an invaluable skill in the culinary world, and we wish you the best in your future endeavors. He puts his hand out to shake your guys' hands. I'll, I'll shake, shake it. All right. In time. We do it at the same time, all three of us. <laughs> Clifton walks over to Ina, gives her a big hug, lifts her up off the, off the fucking ground, and it's then, like, the put, puts her down, and then you can just see him whisper something in her ear, give her a, a good thumbs up, and... Walks out the the bronze phoenix. Are they trying to hot a flat poison? <laughs> what? Nothing. Try to hot a whole ha In that three what? second whisper, they plan to mutiny. You just shoot the old woman. <laughs> Clifton, oh, come God. back. <laughs> I'll actually take uh, the orc back. Brom, where you at? <laughs> Blood sandwich. All right. Ina looks very excited, and uh, she she mentions to you that she's never been like a personal chef before, but she's worked as a cook on a lot of ships. <clears throat> um, and she just looks forward to having the opportunity. All right. Meanwhile, down below in the cargo bay, you guys are waiting for the next person to arrive. And then you can hear someone coming down the ladder and walking out. And you see a young man in a chef's outfit with his head down, just walking, skipping along as he leaves. Before eventually, a interesting looking figure steps into your office. You see maybe a halfling, but they look strong and muscular with a shaved head and deep-set brown eyes. They wear form-fitting leather armor and carry a sleek, curved sword at their hip. They also have several tattoos on their arms and chest, and they like their chest is open so you can see, and just this confident smirk on their lips as they walk in. Hello. Nice to meet you, fellas. Big smile. Likewise. I'm Cock. May I I'm sit Brock. down? Of course. Excellent. I they run, do a backflip onto the box, and just stand <laughs> on it. Still smiling. I've seen someone sit like that. Confidence. What should well, I call you? <laughs> My friends call me Pimbo the Shadow. <laughs> My tortoise was playing a Pimbo machine over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than my birth name. Pimpo. Oh, you got that right. Pimbo. More like bimbo. Anyway, I was hmm, walking around the keep and uh, heard that there's a expedition going on and uh, wanted in on the adventure and the glory. Well, this this is it. Um, do you have any special skills that you would like oh, to Oh, absolutely. Know? Of course. I'm one of the top spies in Iva's fleet. I'm a skilled thief. Master of Stealth. I am always looking for a new challenge. This would be one of those, and I enjoy nothing more than setting up and pulling off a great daring heist, outwitting all rivals around me. Would you say you're more of a solo artist or a team player? Well, I can play with a team, but... I definitely have certain skills that can be held back when around others, so if you were to utilize me, it would be in sending me ahead and scouting out, or perhaps heading into an enemy's base and performing some trisk tricky task that they you don't want to be detected. But they continue smiling. <laughs> My small stature allows me to sneak in and out of places undetected. Ooh. Mm -hmm, yes. Uh, have you ever ripped out a spine before? <laughs> no, but I have jumped into a giant beast's gullet and stabbed their tongue until they barfed me out. 
that was pretty fun. If you had to, would you be able to rip out a spine? Um, and would you enjoy it? Oh, I mean, if I was able to, that would be a great fun, but I, I don't think that I'm physically capable, nor would I typically be in a situation where that is necessary. Typically, I'm very quick and I get out of places before spine ripping is required. So you're against it? No, no. I would love to be able to do it. Good, good, good. Good. Because uh, you may be in a situation where that would be required. Mm. Well, if you have capabilities of making me strong enough to rip out a spine, I'd be all ears. Cutting out works too. We just need the spine removed. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Keep that in mind as well. But yes, uh, we we absolutely have capabilities of uh, making you stronger for a time, at the very least. Yes. Constant hours and upon hours of training. Excellent. I love training. <laughs> well, you'll fit right in with Brack here. What is your opinion on hugs? Ooh. I'm not a big hugger myself, uh, but... Uh, mm, if they are necessary to get what I want, then... I'll... Uh, hug a motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> My face, my Brock's face just goes plain, like, kind of disappointed. <laughs> Br Brack will remember that. <laughs> Brack will remember that. You should protect your spine. <laughs> uh, if you had one fear that was greater than the rest, what would that be? <laughs> A fear? Oh, well. I... I don't know if I... Well... Give me a persuasion roll, uh, Cock. You can see that they're conflicted to answer this. The rock is conflicted. The boulder, not the rock. No, the Dwarga had the rock. <laughs> 24. <sighs> I suppose it wouldn't hurt to tell you. They sort of put their hand out, and running up to the tip of one of their fingers, you can see a small little green gecko. This is Paddington. He is the... <laughs> You're not going to believe me when I say this. Former leader of a local drug dealing gang on my home planet. I've turned him into a gecko. Well, one of my arcanic friends has, and uh, I'm holding him prisoner in a way. So if he ever turns back into what he truly is, I will not make it out of life. Um, so I suppose <laughs> keeping him as a gecko... <laughs> Uh, or him not being a gecko is my greatest fear. And then they pull their hand back and the gecko runs up their sleeve. <laughs> That's a new one. It's a long story. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> I've seen a lot of things, Tortle. Well, thank you for your honesty. Yeah. You people aren't uh, super talkative, are you? I wouldn't have to be, like, chatting all the time if I joined you. Not always. Okay. And I have a tendency sometimes, if you are talking a lot, to listen in. So if you have any secrets you don't want me to hear, just make sure I'm not around. That is very useful. Yes. And no, I, I tend to... Tell everyone everything. <laughs> most people, everything. Oh, well, let me ask you, what's your biggest fear? Mm. <laughs> Nobody well. ever asks me my <laughs> biggest fear. <laughs> they always ask. Who is talk, but never how is talk. <laughs> well, I have. I'm, I'm a bit overprotective of, let's say my, employees, and that stems from. A fear of them ever being, hurt and me being responsible. Yeah. Sounds like you're the type of guy I want to work for. Well, thank you for the interview. We will we'll be in touch very soon. All right. Uh, have a good one. Spine Beautiful. rippers. They jump down off the box and run out <laughs> as fast as they can, showing you their skill as they leave. I didn't like that guy. <laughs> it was the spines, wasn't it? It was the hugs. And the hugs, yes. I should have asked that question more. <laughs> who knows who these people are if they don't like hugs? I get up and slam my hand on the table 
in an attempt to look like I'm straightening out the papers I wrote shit on. <laughs> then I make my way over. Are they just standing in the hangar? What, all the people you interviewed? Yeah. People who are still here. They're, they're sat outside, and you can see some of them are talking to each other. Some are just stood around being silent. Okay. None of the people you interviewed have left. Um, ah, good. Uh, I think. Hold on, let me make sure that is actually true. <laughs> Everyone's gone. Uh, -oh. uh. Okay, the only person that's left is uh, Zalith Jalen the Goliath. Fuck. I needed his Instagram. I need to see his pecs in 4K. <laughs> oh, I need the thirst trap. I need trust. to see his biggity biggity balls. <laughs> <laughs> you just know he's got big balls. <laughs> the biggest. All right. You see these people. Uh, Brack, would you like to go tell... Uh, engineer number two that uh, she is hired? Ah, uh, yes. Of course. I walk up to engineer number two. The tabaxi wisps? Yeah. She sat up right. on a couple of stacked boxes and looks down Congrats. at you. You're hired. Really? Uh, uh, thank, thank you. She jumps down, puts her hand out to shake yours. How about a hug? Uh, of course. <laughs> Fantastic. Big hug. Um, as you're hugging her, how much do I get paid for this? <laughs> you'll, have have, you'll, you'll have to talk to the to cock about that. Oh, uh, okay. She looks around awkwardly at the other people that are just watching this happen. Should I just walk on the sh the ship? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, can Unless I go... you need to collect anything. Yeah, I was gonna go pack up my stuff real quick. I I'll, I'll be right back, like twenty minutes. Sure. All right, she runs. I walk up to the cock. Who's next? Uh, weapon master number two is who I was meant to say, but yes, that she is also hired. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my God. oh my god! Oh my god! She gets back with all of her belongings. Sorry, we've gone a different direction. <laughs> we made a mistake. I was told the wrong thing. <laughs> the Steve Harvey thing all over again. Oh yeah, there was only one that? engineer. There was only <laughs> one engineer, but there's the weapon master who was from the fleet that we said yes to. Okay. Do you want um... Oh, there's... Oh, there you go. <laughs> Goodbye. I was gonna say, do you want um, Erebus and Devon to join you guys in the cargo hold to discuss the rest of the candidates? Oh uh, yeah, if I was going to make my way to them, but seeing that the candidates were here, I would wait for them to come down if they cool. can. Yeah, so basically once Ina gets situated, we'll have to figure out the crew quarters situation later, but um, once she gets situated with her, she begins setting up the kitchen how she likes it. Uh, Devon and... And Erebus head down. Erebus seems like his facial expression is completely right. blank. So how'd the show go? Uh, we got we got a uh, few fingers that uh, fell off, but um, that Ooh, did kind of narrow saddle. down the amount of people that we had to uh, judge, and uh, we now have uh, Ina, the excellent Ina. Who shall be our chef? Who made a very, uh, very good sandwich? Don't you say, Osiris? I agree. I will. I'll show them my hand of notes. So we've hired everyone we need to hire. A lot of things about spines. <laughs> uh, I got us an engineer, and the only engineer that was there, and we have a weapon specialist as well. I spoke to the pilot with the AI pilot. Yeah, all the pilots left. Yeah, all the, uh, none of the pilots uh, wanted to be interviewed. Well, then I guess I'm flying along with the help of Cog. Isn't that right, Cog? I was told to remain silent while strangers are around. And then all the all the people that are waiting around like look around like, what the fuck was that? Don't worry about it. Just our intercom system. 
Sounded very robotic. Yeah. We have a very shitty intercom system. Everyone starts rubbing their shins. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like when you're on Discord with someone and their voice goes all robotic because they're lagging out. That's just what it yeah. is. Yes. Um, well, well, let's wait for our, everyone on the crew to be here. Uh, the hyperdrive is installed, correct? It seemed like it. If you look around the engine room and the cockpit and stuff, it seemed like it. The option is now available. All right. Once everyone's ready, we can set off. And uh, basically, the way the hyperdrive works is you can hyperdrive from anywhere in the galaxy, but you can only... They're all connected to the forges, so you can only arrive at one of the forges. And go to the Grey Forge. <laughs> Just show up and kill all the enemies. Exactly. Let's go back to the Star Forge. Fuck it. But yeah, basically... The, the, the Light Forge. Also, did you end up giving Cock the fucking messenger? Uh... No, he didn't respond when I called mail time. Oh, okay. Hold on, let Cock, me put by it the in. way, here's a message for you. <laughs> oh, great. I, I meant to give that to you like 30 minutes ago, but you didn't respond to me, so. Ah, uh, yes, I was talking about spines. No, this is when you were uh, loading stuff on the dock. I called out Cock mail time, and you did not respond. Yeah, I didn't hear that at all. I was too mm. busy uh, asserting dominance with the number of boxes I can hold. Gotcha. Priorities are clear. It's, it's understandable. All right, so which which weapon specialist are you hiring? The ex-fleet lady. Brulin Iron Fury? Yes, Iron Fury. All right, so Brock heads over, delivers the, the, the news. They just slowly nod. Uh, all right. You guys begin to prep for the journey. You banish all the other people off your ship. Get out! Pork, Pork Pork the Goblin is truly depressed by this news that he's not going to be joining you, but he'll 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 get on he'll get on with his life. Um, someday, someday, yeah. Get on with life someday. <laughs> he was that disappointed. Okay, the. So Bruce Hackman is already on board. He has already procured a room. You're not sure which one, but uh, he has. You also notice that the main captain's quarters has been refurbished with Anno Fleet style furniture. At least there's a little bit like you can tell that they're knockoffs, but it's not like you wouldn't really notice unless you were truly paying attention and um, unless. Andrew tells me that he's annoyed by that. I'm going to assume Cox's okay with it. Um, the crew cabins have been refitted. So now you can put uh, four people per cabin, although it is cramped. But um, as long as you keep morale up, it shouldn't be that big of a problem. So you've basically doubled the amount of people that you can fit in those rooms. Or uh, the crones have helped you double that. <clears throat> um... Ark also wanted to talk to the scientist lady. Ah, okay. You grab Liren before she leaves. Ah, I understand your decision. Uh, I am disappointed, but uh, thank you for the opportunity. She's oh no, turning. I wanted to hire you personally. Oh, um, oh, okay, oh, oh yes, uh, uh, fantastic. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I, thank, thank you. <laughs> She's <laughs> back. She's not good at talking. <laughs> so you and Kimberly currently are current are currently currently currently. <coughs> you work specifically for me, whereas the rest of the crew is just kind of the crew. Oh uh, well, of course. And uh, whatever I discover on Begarok, I will share it with you independently. I suppose. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you rub your hands together, Birdman <laughs> style. All right, so you also add Dr. Lear and Vault to the crew. So now, 13, 14, all right, you have 14 crew members currently. All right. And I'm going to up your crew score to plus two because you've, they've, you've given your crew two days off on board the keep. So they are refreshed and ready for a new adventure. Um, provided better immunity. You guys are preparing. Um, if you want to have like a, a 
a full group talk about what you guys are exactly doing. You can do that and like have, you know, what the uh, new hires are going to get paid and stuff like that. Also, Cock has this message that paid. he needs to listen to at some point. Paid experience. Paid. Ha! I can make all of them leave right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They all quit immediately. One gold a day. Eh. <laughs> For all of them combined, I have to fight over who gets this. We put them all in the slave cage, and whoever wins gets the gold. <laughs> you, you also all have the potential to be furloughed at any moment, given uh, any decision by any of us. Good, good. I don't know, what is a, like, typical wage in this galaxy, Dylan? Well, Timbley Bibbs is uh, 150 gold per month, um, and that's, like, on the low end. And I will say this, the scientist is on my payroll, so uh, it's none of your business. All right, but I have, I have, you've hired four people today. You also add uh, Tally Hertz, who's somewhere, uh, I'll say that she's made it back to the ship at this point. She's gathered some things and prepares. Hey. She will talk with Wisps about, you know, how to deal with the engine. Latour also comes in from time to time and speaks to them. Uh, they're a little bit made uncomfortable by him, but he does give them the rundown of the ship. Um, they, they're they both very hesitant because of the AI that occasionally talks, but the chance to be a part of this crew is enough to, for them to, you know, be silent about it for now. Um, but the, probably the person that's most turned off by the AI is Ina, the cook. She's just completely baffled by the fact that uh, you have an AI installed into the ship, but she's, she's only old. been hired for for a few hours, so she won't she won't get her panties in a twist right now. All right, what would you guys like to do as you prepare? I'm going to go uh, with Dridgy into my room to look at the tape if we're not going to immediately speak on the wages of ship. Okay. You head into your captain's quarters with Trigi. Timbley Bibbs is in there lying on a couch that you see, mm -hmm. uh, and he's completely blackout drunk. <laughs> nah, I'm sure he's fine. I just want to make sure that everyone's actually on the ship. I'm like looking over the passengers and like I'm going to forget somebody and they're just left on a... <laughs> Aiden Keep. Alright. So you head into your captain's quarters. Is there anything else anyone wants to do uh, with the crew before uh, Cock listens to his message? No. Uh, Devon will just individually greet all of the new members and then just retire to his quarters. Alright. Retire to your quarters. I assume... Erebus is heading up to the cockpit to prepare for takeoff. Indeed, I'm getting ready for our ship to take off. Anyone, any, please make sure our, all arms, legs, and mouths are inside the ship at all times. Anyone left on the docking bay in the next five minutes will be left behind. Thank you. <laughs> Secure your belongings. We're not liable for that ship. <laughs> exactly. So, Tally and Wisp are in the engine room. Cock and Drigi and Timbley Bibbs are in the captain's quarters. <laughs> Erebus is in the cockpit. Devon is in his room, which is... We're gonna have to figure out at some point who's sharing what. I'm gonna have to add a whole bunch of new pictures and shit for people. <laughs> but we'll do that uh, at a later date. How could I have prepared that? I didn't know who you're gonna fucking hire. <laughs> All right, it's D and D, everybody. We love this game. <laughs> um, Bruce is in one of the rooms. Doctor Liren heads to the. I'm gonna say that she heads to the medic bay for now to take a look around at what you guys have. Um, eh, Leonard Latouris in the engine room as well. Brock, what, Brack, what are you doing? Oh, I'm in the cargo hold doing upside down push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are upside down push-ups? You just put no. your arms behind your yeah, back. Behind my back, doing push-ups like that. Okay. <laughs> Stopping there. Nice. Jesus yeah. Christ, it's Jason Bourne. 
All right, and I believe that's everyone covered. Okay, so, Cock, you head into your captain's quarters, and you place the the message device. It's like a silver disc. You place it into your terminal that is in your room, and it begins playing a message. The first thing you hear is just like a slightly robotic female voice saying, This, this was, was the last message we intercepted, intercepted from Elphir before, before the shields, shields were activated. And then <laughs> an image appears. And you see your longtime friend, but recently you haven't spoken in a while in person, Thurlow, the ambassador from Elphir. And this is what he says. <sighs> okay, is it recording? Coculus, I don't know if you are alive, but I need you to listen to me very carefully. If you are hearing this and also got my last message, ignore it completely. Don't visit me here on Elphir. Things have gotten bad quickly with the attacks from the pirate fleets, and it is no longer safe. Return to the Anno Church immediately and speak with the highest priestess, Lady Holywind. They are, uh, we are, the one group with the power to stop this evil in the galaxy. I know you are upset about Lady War's passing, but she is no longer alive. She's, she was, at very least, always fair as the highest priestess. The shadow swell is a damn thing. But you can feel sad about that over drinks at Tel Mendo's pit stop later. Highest Priestess Lady Holywind, she knows what the church needs at a time like this. I don't know exactly where to find passage back to the fleet myself, so I ask you to be a hero in this moment. To save some time, I have added a file of important documents about my discoveries on Elphir. Maybe this can help the church at a time of great distress in the galaxy. For now, we must focus on the present and make sure that we are prepared for the current mission to pr protect the church at all costs from the oncoming threat of the pirate lord Tratus. Whatever it is you end up doing, if you are alive, Mr. Coculus, please don't waste any time in returning to the fleet. They are going to need help planning the next steps of all of this. The church missing one of its most passionate priests is killing morale, so I've heard. You are key to us sticking together through these hard times. Either we stand side by side, or we give up everything you and I and the whole fleet have been building for over a hundred years, and all that the beautiful anomaly has blessed us with the ability to see. The pirate lord Tratus is so powerful that the church needs defenders now more than ever. Good luck, old friend. You know the anomaly is watching. May it bless your and my every move, and I hope to see you when things are back to normal. Goodbye. They're all out. Um, Lauren, how do I stop the recording? And then it cuts <laughs> off. Give me an uh, insight check, Cock. 23. God damn. Okay. Um, the audio recording was very clean, but one thing you noticed that's strange, as you were watching the holographic image of Thurlow, Every now and again, in between sentences, the footage would just, like, cut weirdly. It would, like, cut out, and then he'd come back on in a way that you don't typically see in hollow recordings. Noted. Well, Gucci, we are... Gucci <laughs> just stands there. A uh, friend of yours, I presume? Yes. Uh, we go way back. Like, we'll be returning to the fleet a bit sooner than previously thought. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's for the best. Be good to see some old friends, and they could help us with everything that's going on, right? With me and stuff. Yes. I'm glad they finally found a new leader. Yeah, Holy Wind... It's not really on brand for the highest priestesses, but she's very powerful, so hopefully that's what we need at a time like this. Okay, bye. I, I okay, bye! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Drigi sits down in the room on some of the new comfortable furniture, and you you leave, or are you saying goodbye to her for her to leave? <laughs> I I grab Timbley's unconscious body, put it on my shoulder, and leave the room. <laughs> okay. Georgie's like, uh, do you need help with that? or? I mean, if you want to carry him, you can, but... Nah. 
Yeah, okay. You, you can you can chill here. Offers Jesus. to help. Doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> I she is the worst. to find my other employee. <laughs> Alright, you head off towards the medic bay. Is there anything else anyone else wants to do? No, I'm good. Just prepping the engines. Alright. Basically, what, what uh, Erebus is waiting on is for Tally and Wisps to check the engines before you guys hyper drive. Hyper drive, hyper base jump. All right, cock. You head towards the medic bay. You like you're walking past the hallway, and then you see, you see Laren inside. Is is everyone? Uh, 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 yep. Mm-hmm. Does all one of you look good? Is all one of you look good? <laughs> I, I give her a big toothy smile. She looks. She's like. She's opened one of the cupboards and is looking through some, like, the supplies you have, the medicine. It is, it, I'm sorry, um... What Are there th- any supplies that you would need that we don't currently have? I should oh, take into account. Oh, no, no, I, I was just uh, curious of what you have. Um, you're, well, you're well stocked. Uh, maybe a few things here and there that uh, perhaps a trader or something would have, but uh, nothing in particular that I, I require. Sounds good. And something of importance when you have time is uh, if you could conduct some research on these vomit balls, that would be wonderful. Uh, vomit balls? Oh, le- yes, let me see. Uh, those are two words that I'm very intrigued by. I give her my <laughs> tube of vomit balls. What a callback. All right, she grabs them. Oh. Well, these are quite interesting. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll start looking at them right away. And uh, this is our my <laughs> potion master, and is he all right? Uh, yeah, he was celebrating the revival of uh, one of our two of our dead companions. Oh, uh, wow! He works hard, and he parties harder. Very good. Did you need me to? Uh, I, w- I was just introducing you to his currently oh. lifeless body, um, but good. when he is awake and once we do get to uh, the fruit zone, as it were, <laughs> the fruit he, zone. <laughs> he could be helpful can... in the manufacturing of some <laughs> useful potions. That He's a are. bit of a fruit ninja himself, <laughs> if you will. She shakes his unconscious foot. Very good. Well, I will leave you be for now, and uh, yeah, I'll go and yeah, drop but... his corpse back off in the room. By the time you're exiting, she's already chopping one of the balls in half. <laughs> All right. All right. Is there anything else any anybody wants to do before you begin your trek to the Light Forge? I'm gonna show Erebus my the tape that he gave me and already took. Okay, you head back up towards the cockpit. You can hear insane moaning and groaning and thrusting coming from the cargo bay. <laughs> it sounds like Brock is having a great time in there. <laughs> yeah! Poke my head in the cargo bay. <laughs> you see him just working his ass off. He's borderline twerking. He's being so aggressive with his workout. <laughs> His ass looks great. Feel the burn! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but you head up the stairs and approach the tabaxi. Now you've got two tabaxis in your crew. Uh-huh. The, the, the male tabaxi. Hey, so, uh... You're, you're good at uh, video decoding looking, right? Yeah. Great. Maybe you could take a look at this uh, this video here. It seems to be a bit stitched, and uh, maybe you could unstitch that. Yeah. Can I just do a sleight of hand to like pull out the Thieves Code app where I've already unscrambled everything and just put it in front of him to see if he notices? <laughs> you absolutely can do that. <laughs> Have you you haven't listened to the unscrambled message, have you? Uh no, but I figured I probably worked on unscrambling yeah, you, it. 
Yeah. I just haven't listened to it. Okay. Um, shit, I'm trying to do that math. Uh, 23. All right, roll a perception roll, cock. One second, all right. It's the battle of the titans here with these rolls. <laughs> Keep in mind, I rolled an eight. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fucking crazy. Uh, 15. All right, so yeah, it just looks like he does it right here and now. Mm -hmm. He's so good. So fast. Wow. There's a reason I was the best spy for Ragnarok. So basically what you do, Erebus, you would know this, but Cock wouldn't know this. There's parts of the file that have been almost like... You've seen this kind of thing before. It's almost like purposefully been corrupted. And you've sectioned out those bits and put them together into one audio file and placed it back on the disc. Mm -hmm. I hit play. All right, you hit play, and this is what you both hear. Coculus, if you're hearing this, ignore the Anno Church and the highest priestess, Lady Holy Wind. They are evil. Lady War is alive. She is at Tel Menda's pit stop. She knows where to find a hero to save the galaxy from the pirate Lord Traitus. Whatever you do, please don't return to the fleet. They are going to kill you or give you over to Traitus. The church is watching my every move and the recording. Hmm. Hmm. Well, there goes our hope for allies in the fleet. Uh, not entirely, but uh, allies of the entire fleet, absolutely. Should we go murder a fleet? <laughs> <laughs> That's Ripper's oh. finds out. It's our calling card. Not the whole fleet, because, uh, you know, I don't want my parents dead or my, my friends dead. I thought we were your friends. <laughs> I kid. I don't even know who you are. But, uh, some. We might need to do some, uh, test extermination. Damn, bro, you took that fucking. You took that news like a champ. Yeah. In other news, Lady War is apparently alive, so... That's doodly, 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 doodly. Do we I'm not gonna go take that shit to Druji. <laughs> Do we stop at the pit stop on our way to Vagarok? Uh, is it on the way to Vagarok? I don't know where it is. Yes, it's like directly south of us, and then we can jump to Vagarok. Then perfect. Yeah, you could definitely do that. Alright, Cog, let's get this show on the road. So COG is operational now, then? The yes! Point. Captain Cog. May, May I call you something, something different? different? That name is quite embarrassing. Uh, is there another name you had in mind? Maybe Pimp Master Daddy? <laughs> How about Kevin? Mm. I'm not running for an election right now, so probably not Kevin. Um, How about Colin? Colin sounds good. New name activated. All we had to do to not call you that was ask you if we could call you something else. <laughs> <laughs> this whole time? God damn it. Alright, Colin. Hold up, you're not Cog. So I have to keep calling you, but the AI can call you uh, Colin? Exactly. Let's see how it is. Damn you, chat GPT. <laughs> I'm bringing the <laughs> recording to Driggy and play it. Oh, okay. You bring it down to the captain's quarters and play the recording for Driggy. And she sits there staring at it. No, th that doesn't make any sense. There there are people. There are that does, that's our home. Why would they I I don't I don't believe it. Well, we're going to the pit stop, so we'll Figure out what's going on. Cock, you heard the original message. He, he said go to the church. I understand you've got uh, clearly some sort of video editor on this ship somewhere. You've hired so many people <laughs> recently, but <laughs> if, if our people need us, if they need you, surely it's time we should return. We will return, but we have some things to do first. You say as you put your sunglasses on and just walk out. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. Yeah! 
<laughs> Smack her. Uh, Get a hold of yourself. Yeah. She just looks at you. She's looking at you for confirmation, but also, like, she doesn't want to believe what you just played her. All right, but the ship begins to fly up out of Aiden Keep, and the last thing you guys hear before you take off is Navigator Jexion over the communicator. Good luck, crew of the Bronze Phoenix. May your journey be safe and probably full of terrors, but regardless, you will, you will make it through. I believe in you, and, well... Hopefully, this is all worth it. The night is safe and full of terrors. I believe in you too, Jackson. Safe travels. I'll try not to consume any brains while you're away. Jackson. Jack's off. The jacker. And then... <laughs> the ship begins to fly out of the hangar bay. Alright, so... The trek to Telman is pit stop. It's gonna take... About a day and a half considering you have two pilots. You don't have to stop. Um, which is very useful. <laughs> Jade was quite the quite the soldier for you guys. Um, <laughs> Alright, so you guys begin traveling. I think I think now is a good sort of natural ending spot. And then next episode you will be you will, you know, get to the pit stop and See what's going down. Do we get extra up. spicy next time? Every every time I prepare for like the new part of the campaign, the exact same thing happens. Like I should have known that you were gonna spend like two hours on the it, it, logically the position <laughs> thing was gonna take a long time. But in my mind, I was like, oh yeah, well that'll be ten minutes, and then we'll leave the fucking the castle. We'll we'll no. begin the journey. But Maybe. I think it worked out for the best because you guys got to know the new characters there will be more we have later. the first uh, champion of master chef bronze phoenix <laughs> yes every time you make a stop you have to see if uh ina can uh hold her crown against new competition keep her on her toes all right that was uh that was pretty good and you're you're let you leave the the keep knowing that iva and her crew are headed out to try to track down Typhon. You all are headed back to Erebus's ancestral home. You have an extra tabaxi with you now, so maybe they'll have some information, although she hates leaving the ship, so probably not. And, um, lots of mysteries. There's, a, there's that part, of course, too, of can we truly trust all of our new roommates? Yeah. yeah. Hiring four new people, it's very easy for a spy to sneak through. Not Shit, there might be a spy with the original crew, who knows? It's I mean, I am it could, could be you! It could be me! It could be any of us! It Shoot could be the guy the who's literally... Well, it was clearly him. It could be the body in the hangar! <laughs>